Good morning, welcome to our daily psalm. Today we're reading through Psalm 4. Psalm 4. And like its predecessor, Psalm 3, Psalm 4 is a poem written from within, besetting trouble, not written afterwards when everything is all straightened out, and actually when faith is easy, isn't it? The poem begins with a brisk plea, um, a plea to God, and then it uh, differentiates three and contemplates three groups of people, uh, all of whom in their different way are making demands on David's life and are making David's life difficult, who are getting at him, threatening him even, uh, certainly threatening his mental well-being, being a real drain, a burden on his life. You might recognise uh, some of them in your own life as we go through and to each group, David gives a rejoinder, uh, an answer. And the psalm eventually leads through to the final verse, a final statement of his own reliance on God's resources rather than the burdensome offerings that these people are pushing into his life. Um, so let's read verse 1. Answer me when I call, O my God, O God of my righteousness, in my constraint, give me room. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Answer me when I call, O God. One commentator notes the interaction in that first line, that God doesn't answer sometime down the line after David has made his plea. The expectation in David writing this is that God will answer when he calls, not later on. And the assumption is that this is a, a conversation that's going on, not a, a cry from, uh, for help from David into the sort of nothingness of space that God will later on pick up on his answer machine. No, it's far more immediate than that. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness, in my constraint give me room. In other words, Lord, I'm in a really tight spot here. I'm being suffocated. I'm being squeezed. There are people who are draining my life. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. And David doesn't actually say what his prayer is, but instead he goes through uh, three sets of people that are pressing in on him. He turns first to those who slander and who humiliate him, verses 2 and 3. How long will you people dishonour my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know this, that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. And then David references himself. And this isn't a brag that he is godly and they're not. Um, this is merely, in a sense, a statement of truth here. Um, the he uh, one Hebrew scholar says that the word used there for godly means one who is loved by God and who loves God back, who is in that mutual loving relationship with God. Um, which is where David says he is and what he knows about himself. So the answer to the people's false accusations against him is to remember how God regards him, and God regards him as godly. Remember my godliness, O Lord, effectively, he says. Um, maybe that's something for us to learn too, when people are um, telling lies about us, misinformation about us and therefore how we might be perceived by other people beyond that. Actually, the, what really matters is how God perceives us and whether he perceives us as someone who loves him and who he loves in return. Well, verses 4 and 5, David turns to those of his supporters who are up in arms about David's critics and are rather taking matters into their own hands, lashing out, ostensibly on behalf of David, trying to give as good as David is getting from them. And 
David had wor has words for them too. Verse 4. Tremble in anger, but do not sin. Commune with your own heart upon your bed, and be still. Offer true sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. So David says to his hothead friends, control your anger. Keep your thoughts to yourself and your mouth shut. Be still. Now those words aren't there that Jesus used to calm the storm. Be still, calm the storm, and leave any judgments with God. Maybe we need to hear those words of restraint sometimes too when we get worked up. Keep your thought to yourself, your mouth shut. Leave judgment to God. Instead of going off on one in a very opinionated way to make sure that people know jolly well what they are doing is wrong and we should tell them. Let's leave it to God a bit more maybe. And then in verses 6 and 7, um, David addresses, well, the eors in his life. Um, he addresses those who are in, those who support him, but they're always downbeat and always gloomy and always pessimistic and they actually drain the life out of him. Is verse uh, 6. There are many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. David knows the only answer for his drains is that they too should see and know God for themselves, that when God makes his face shine upon them, then they will stop looking at their circumstances and wishing they were better. Goes on in verse 7. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. So the happiest that David's drains get is when the crop returns are good. Um, it's the only thing that brightens up their day, really. And David, in contrast, knows an inner gladness. Um, and in a gladness that troubles cannot destroy. It's the joy of the heart that God gives. You've, you have put gladness in my heart, he says to God, much more than anything that gets them excited, which rarely happens. And so we reach the final verse, verse uh, 8, and it's David last David's last word on the people who between them could stifle the life out of him, who so constrain him, that constraint that he complained of in verse 1, in my constraint, give me room. Verse 8, uh, in peace I will lie down and sleep. In peace, in shalom, with everything right, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. That word safety can be uh, unafraid. For you, o Lord, o, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell unafraid. There's a contented, calm peacefulness about David. At the end of the day, quite literally, for he's about to lie down and go to sleep, this perhaps is an evening psalm, an evening poem. At the end of the day, here, David trusts himself into God's care. Other people come and at David and claw at him with their own agendas. But David needs only the peace which he knows only comes from leaning on God. As he lies down, he leans on his bed and so he leans into God to make him dwell in safety and unafraid and sleep the sleep of peace. Let's take a moment to pray. Give us today, O Lord, a glad heart and a clear conscience that we may come to this day's end in knowledge of your 
grace and goodness to us, your face, your countenance shining upon us, that we may rest in peace with Christ our Lord. Amen.